Well, good morning to Koinonia Church this morning. We want to welcome you. If you're from a visiting church and you're watching online, everything is online, so we welcome you too. You might be at home sitting on the same couch, hopefully different pajamas than maybe last week. <laughs> but it, you know what? We just encourage you to engage your hearts in, in worship. I know this is all new for all of us. This is different for all of us. But we just want to encourage you to, to just uh, connect your hearts with what the Lord is doing with us still as a church moving forward. We're so glad that we can get together um, online and it's so many of you are taking pictures and posting them on Instagram. It's great to see your faces and know that we're still meeting together even though we're separate. Um, this morning we're, we're singing songs all about the power of the name of Jesus. That it's so easy to look at our mountains and, and go to God and complain to God about what's going on in our lives. But a lot of times the Bible, the Bible tells us to actually do the opposite, to go tell our mountains what to do and tell our mountains how great our God is. We know that there is power in the name of Jesus, that as we call on the name of Jesus, he hears us that he fills us with peace like Pastor Brian spoke about so well last week. He fills us with peace that we don't even understand. He fills us with the, the gifts of the Spirit. He fills us with, with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, self-control, even in our homes. So no matter what is going on in your life, no matter what feels out of control, let's just surrender it all to the Lord this morning as we worship. Keeper of the day and the night Holder of the sun in the sky You command the water and the wind There's not one thing you're not greater than Greater than the mountain that's in front of me You are greater So much greater Greater than the power of the end that I face My hope is in your name and nothing less There's not one thing you're not greater than Greater than the mountain that's in front of me You are greater So much greater Greater, so much greater. 
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. No, we'll see how great, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great. God. Name above. You are the name above all names, and you are worthy of all praise. My heart will sing how great is our God. Can't deny your name cannot be all 
Death could not hold you, victor before you, you silence the boast of sin and grief. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to one of our homes we're saying your name out loud and together Jesus Jesus you have broken all chains of darkness you are the one we look to today for hope you are the one we look to today to fill our lives with your peace so we proclaim your name together Jesus we love you in your name we pray with power amen Amen. Well, good morning, church. This morning, we're celebrating being together, and I want to bring you a scripture from 2 Chronicles 7.14 this morning, and you know it well. And this verse is a verse that is a global event that is happening across our land that believers are grabbing onto this scripture, praying it out, and believing for God to move in our land. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Isn't that such a great scripture to hold on to together, church, today? And I invite you to check out Unite 714 and look it up. It's amazing to see what God is doing as we join together in prayer across our land. Well, church, we know there are so many prayer requests uh, represented here with your families. Also, a lot of praises as well. There's so many things we've been grateful for this week. God has been working. He has bringing hope to people. And one of our first responders here at our church at Koinonia is thanking God that he has passed the next step into his career journey. And how incredible is that in the midst of this crazy time that God is still promoting his people 
to bring hope and to bring healing. There's also many, many prayer requests represented. And one of the areas we're focusing on is for our first responders and our essential workers. We know that they are working incredibly long hours. We know that they need protection. We know that they need protection from sickness to cover their families as well. And we are so grateful for our healthcare workers, our paramedics, doctors, nurses, as well as all of our essential workers, those of you in the trucking industry and grocery, and we are so grateful. And we've been working with an initiative this week to connect each one of our essential workers with an individual prayer partner so they can have one-to-one -one prayer so we can support them fully as they serve us in the community. We had many other prayer requests come in online on our website where you can click I have a need on our COVID update page and many prayer needs represented there for peace of mind, for sickness of course, for financial difficulties that has affected so many of us. So we want to go to God in prayer for that as well. We've also had one of our church families, the Kufsky family, we're offering condolences to them on the passing of Jim's father this week. So church, we have so many things to go to God's throne with. So let's do that together now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne today, just like your word says. We humble ourselves. We seek your face first, not because we have to, but because today we choose to. We call you out as our God. We know you are victorious. And so we come before you with gratefulness for the things you're doing in our lives. We thank you with gratefulness for the incredible move that we're seeing of your love going across this nation through our communities and through our neighborhoods. And as well, God, today, we have so many things we want to lift before you because your word says, cast your cares on me and I will care for you. And so today, Lord, we lift up those who are still working in the front lines. We pray protection. Your word says you're, you're like a shield around us. And so we pray your protection over them and their families. We pray strength and health. And we proclaim, God, that they will have everything they need to complete the work they need to do. And Lord, for those facing financial difficulties right now, God, these times we have never experienced before, quite like this, and yet you are the God of all time. You have seen people have needs for provision from the beginning of time until now. And so we call out to you because you are the God who provides for your people and you love each person on this earth. And so we believe you for financial provision today for our families. We believe you, God, for healing of this nation. Like your scripture says, you will hear from heaven and heal our land. May you bring repentance, God. May we be a land that repents and turns towards you so that hearts would be healed. And as well, God, so that bodies would be healed, so this virus would stop, so that this land would be healed, and we would give you the glory. Father, we thank you that you are the God of great comfort, and I know you are bringing comfort to so many families, so many individuals. And we lift up the Kufsky family to you and others, God, who have experienced loss this week. Jesus, your name is powerful and you are the great comforter and we speak your name, Jesus, over them now. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us as your church. We celebrate you today in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I welcome you this morning, Koinonia. We're so glad that you're here with us. We also welcome all of you who are joining us from other churches this morning. We know there's various churches around the region. And so we invite you to jump onto the chat that's there on your live screen and let us know where you're from. We're happy that you've joined us today. And if you're new and this is your first time joining us, I want to say a big welcome to you. And it is our prayer that here you will find hope and you will find inspiration as you turn your eyes and your life towards Jesus Christ. Well, it has been an exciting week for us 
in the body. We have seen so many needs taken care of. We have seen so many people offering help in so many different ways. And one of the initiatives we've been working on this week is in the next few weeks, calling every individual in our church body just to check in. How are you doing? Are there ways we can support you? And as well, another exciting initiative is many families are jumping in on helping to pack some lunch bags for Ray of Hope. Let me tell you, church, there is no shortage of ways to serve and there's no shortage of needs. So you can check out on our website, on our COVID update spot. There's, a, there's buttons there you can click that can connect you with a leader as well as connect you if you have needs for right now. This is an exciting time to be the church of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to invite you now to listen in on this encouragement from Pastor Nathan. Good morning, church. I want to encourage us as we give today. You know, when we're going through difficult times like the whole world is right now uh, with COVID-19, it can be tempting for us to feel like we need to hold on to all of our resources because of uncertainty or fear or lack. But during times of uncertainty, we see in the scriptures, in the Bible, that God's people were encouraged, challenged, and inspired to continue to give, to continue to trust in God. We need to be good stewards. We need to be wise. But we also need to be creative. How you give may have changed. Maybe you aren't able to give as much financially. Maybe you have nothing to give financially, and you're giving um, meals and other creative ways as well. And maybe giving online is new to you and that's uncomfortable, but it's true that why we give has not changed. We give because God is our source. He is our provider. It's an act of worship. We give because we want other people to hear the good news of the gospel and that has not changed. For a couple of decades now as a church family at Koinonia, we have been celebrating Breakthrough Sunday and that's the last Sunday of every month. And from the very beginning, Breakthrough Sunday was about us as a church family acknowledging and declaring that God is the God of the breakthrough, that he is the one who is able to do impossible things. And if there was ever a time that we needed to remind ourselves that God is the God of the breakthrough, it's now. If there was ever a time when we needed to remind ourselves that God is our source and our provider, not our bank accounts, not the government, not investments, none of those things are our source. God is our source. Today is the day we need to remind ourselves of that. I want to encourage you, if you're from another church, to make sure you're supporting your local church family. And if online giving is new to you, we've just uploaded a couple of tutorials, short tutorials to help you understand how you can give online. But today, throughout this week and this coming month, as you give in financially, as you give in other creative ways, I want to encourage you, give in faith, give with your eyes on Jesus, because he is faithful. He has always provided for his people in difficult times, and he will do the same for us today and throughout the coming weeks and months. God bless you as you, in faith, give to God. Okay. You know what? I've been thinking. The internet is crazy. TikTok, Baby Shark, this kid in Walmart, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, memes. So many memes. But there's some pretty good things that exist because of the internet too. Things like FaceTime, Spotify, Amazon. That's come in handy on a number of occasions. Might be a weakness of mine. Wouldn't be a thing without the internet. Being able to order pizza to your house without having to talk to a single person. The truth is, there's a lot of really incredible things that we get to experience because of the internet. Things that even 15 years ago, would have been hard to imagine even being real. Because of the internet, we've been able to offer online giving at Koinonia for a few years. And for many of us, we've been using it for a while now. But for some of you, it's new. And I wanna show you how giving online at Koinonia, it's simple and secure. Here's how. First, go to kcf.life. That's where you're gonna find everything you need. Scroll down, there's a card called give. 
right there, right there. From this page here, you can do everything you need to when it comes to giving. Then there's literally a button that says give. Wow. Imagine, it's that easy. You can put in your payment information and the amount and bang, done. So easy. Plus, if you sign into your account here, all of your payment information is saved for the next time you use it. So brilliant. But hey, what if you don't want to use this silly website nonsense? What if, what if you what if you want to give the way you pay for your bills in online banking? Then do that. We it, we've made it possible so you can do that. Just add Coinonia as a payee on your online banking profile and shoot us an email or send us a DM and we can get you your unique identifier code. That allows you to give to Coinonia just like you pay for your hydro bill. Honestly, we want this to be easy for you because we believe giving and being generous is important. We want Koinonia to be a place where people feel safe, where people feel home, where people feel that they're known and that they're loved. And your giving allows us to do that. So thank you for being generous. We're always stronger together. Hey everybody. This Sunday at 10.30 a.m., Coordinated Kids is going live on Instagram once again, and we can't wait to see you there. So you can follow us on Instagram, Coinania Kids, and watch our live kids program at 10.30 this morning. We would love to see you there. And if you can't catch us at 10.30 and you're watching this back later, you can still watch us on Instagram, or you can follow up on YouTube. Are you looking to connect while you're at home? Small groups at Koinonia have always been about building relationships and growing together. We're excited to continue to do this online. If you go to kcf.org slash small groups, you'll see a list of all of the life groups and connect groups that we are going to be continuing to do online. Underneath the description of every group, there's a button that you can click to sign up. We'd love for you to connect with us online in a small group. While you're there, you can follow Koinonia on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget that you can also follow Koinonia Kids, Impact Youth, and 2020 Young Adults on Instagram as well. Next Sunday, we are going to be beginning our Easter series, Paid in Full. In Colossians 2.14, it says that God canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. We are looking forward to gathering online for Easter as we explore what paid in full means, what it means when Jesus paid the price of our sin on the cross, and how we can live that out in our daily lives. To get all the information about our online Easter services, you can go to kcf.life slash Easter.
Come speak to the sea that's raging inside of me. All of this worry to you I will release. Oh, I cast my cares in your feet. Father, Father God, we come to you with all that's stirring with inside of us, with all that's going through our thoughts. God, we come to you and, and we cast it all down and we ask for your peace. Father, we, that's our prayer today, this week. Give us your peace, God. Thank you that you are the, the Prince of Peace, the Lord over all that we could trust in you and know that you will breathe peace upon us. Father, that's why we trust completely in you, in Jesus, in Jesus, your son, who's our savior. Thank you for peace today. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning or good afternoon. Good evening if you're watching this later on today. I welcome you also here to connect with us this morning. It is good to have these connections, uh, this technology that we're able to plug into and, 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 and connect online with so that we can all be a part of the church still. Even as it said, we're in different parts, but we're coming together. And as I come to bring uh, a word, the message for you this morning, I want to ask the question is what worship songs have you been singing this week, what have you been worshiping to this week that will allow the peace and the presence of God to come to you? Like the song we just sang just a moment ago, Give Me Your Peace. That's a newer song for us here at Koinonia, uh, but you may have already be familiar with it online. And it's a song that just speaks out God's message of peace. I cast all my cares at your feet. Um, Jesus actually invites us to do that. But do we do that? A song like this will remind us to do that. Come, come speak to the sea that's raging inside of me. Do you ever feel like that? You've got a, a sea that's just heaving and waving and rolling and, and it's causing turmoil. That's what it feels like inside of you. If it is, this is where we can speak out these words of truth is, Lord Jesus, let your peace come down from your hand to my heart. Let your peace come down because that's who you are. And, and I hope you will pick up songs like this and, and be singing them out and let the message of the truth of them speak out over you. Church, as we gather here, friends, as we connect online uh, at this moment or later today, 
What I want you to know is that we, we're doing church differently again this week, different than last week, as you saw. You saw Pastor JP and Nathan leading us in worship this morning, and, and they're up on the platform, and I'm up in another room, and, and we, we, this week, we intentionally called our Waterloo Region's health unit and said, what are we permitted to do? We're deemed as a non-essential business as a church. Um, I won't say anything more than that, but that's what we are deemed as. And, and so I asked, I said, what are we permitted to do? And I gave them this scenario Sunday morning and it's our service and it goes out to hundreds now, thousands of people. We had 19, over 1,900 devices connect last Sunday. If you consider an average of two people per device, you do the math. <laughs> If you consider three or four or more people in your household watching, you do the math. And this is connecting. So I asked the health unit, what are we permitted? And they said um, that we are permitted to still broadcast, to come into the building for this purpose. And so we want you to know, Koinonia community, this morning, we still took precautions. We still did the two-meter distancing, um, and we separated. But we came intentionally because we want to be the church, gathered in spirit and truth as we worship him and as we press into the word. Now let me come back to my question for you, is what are the songs that you've been worshiping with this week? Another song that many have shared with me is the song, The Blessing. Carrie Joe and Cody Carnes uh, wrote that song out of some inspiration time. And you're familiar with the words from this song, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen? Amen. Amen? <laughs> Amen. That is actually from Numbers chapter 6, and it is a word of blessing that God gave to Moses to pass on to Aaron to speak over the people, and, and I spoke it over us last Sunday when we gathered online together. It is a, a blessing. It is a great song to worship to. Here's another one. Graves to Gardens. It's one my daughter, Clara, loves. She's been playing it out and singing it out constantly at home. And the words for it, if you don't know it, I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. You came along, God, and put me back together. There's nothing better than you. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's nothing better than you. There are so many good songs written right now. Even our own church worship leaders are writing songs and are encouraged and excited. Here's another one that we bring to worship often. It's called Fight My Battles. And this is actually the title I've given to this message this morning is Fight Our Battles. Well, who is fighting our battles? What, what are our battles? But the words of this song, pretty straightforward, aren't, we? aren't they? This is how I fight my battles. And how do I do that? I do it by worshiping God. Worship is how I fight my battles. But let's be clear here this morning, today, what are we fighting against? Some of you, many in this world, are fighting against fear. Fear because of what we're hearing of the reports. Fear of the coronavirus. Fear of getting sick. Fear of death. Fear of many things. It's, it's a battle that is in front of people. What overcomes fear? Faith. Faith overcomes fear. Say it out loud. Faith. Faith overcomes. Because what faith does is it engages the will of God. Our faith unleashes the presence of heaven. Our faith unleashes God's power to work in our midst right here and right now. What holds back faith? Um, what holds back, sorry, what holds back the victory is a lack of faith. Let me bring to you Mark 6. Mark records the lack of faith that was in Jesus' own hometown. This is Mark 6, verse 5. Jesus could not do many miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. We see from this text, and there's others like it within Scripture, that highlight that God wants us to have faith. Because when we engage our faith, our belief in God, that with him all things are possible, then what he unleashes is his power to fulfill his will in that moment. God's will is to, is to bring healing to bring deliverance, but he's looking for us to engage our faith. 
And I don't mean conjuring up our faith, um, getting busier, jumping up and down and louder and louder to increase our faith. What I'm talking about is, is our faith on or is it off? And only you know that. Is our faith connected with God? Where is your faith this morning? Let you think about that. Let me bring another song that's great to worship to. A song I've been worshiping to this week is called Sea of Victory. Here's some of the words from this song of Sea of Victory. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness fails, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God never fails. My God never fails. I'm going to see a victory. And it repeats, of course. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to the Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. God, you turn it for good. Can you see why this is a great song to worship to when we feel like we're in the midst of a battle right now? Church, do you believe these words of truth? that come from all these different songs, do you sing them out like they are truth? Do you? I can't quite hear you. (laughs) Do you sing them out? I'm listening. (laughs) Actually, I I think I can hear Robin Lane right there agreeing. (laughs) Robin, thanks for cheering out this morning. Church, we are in a battle right now. We are in a battle for health, for protection, for healing, for deliverance from sickness, We're in a battle for sanity in some of our households, a battle for mental health, for healthy relationships when we've been cooped up together. Some are saying, ah, I don't know if I can handle it another week with my family. We're in a battle that's battles that are unfolding for us. And it's a time for us right now that our faith needs to be awake, alive, and alert. Our faith needs to be engaged with God so that his power can be unleashed in the moments that we're experiencing. If you are new to church or you're new to connecting online with us here in Koinonia and you're watching this service and you're wondering, why on earth am I talking about faith and battles when the real problem is the world is under a pandemic of the coronavirus? That may be your question. Well, let me speak directly to that this morning. This virus is temporary. It's an illness that is affecting the church. And the virus could affect you. Yes, it could affect you physically. It does affect us if if we don't isolate. If we're not sterilizing with hand sanitizer and, and, and being cautious with our distance from each other. But what I'm more specifically wanting to address this morning is the battles for your heart and mind. Because I believe when you're postured with faith and the battles that are after your heart and mind then you're going to gain a new perspective of what's happening in our world right now. This battle is what I'm addressing specifically for you to gain fresh perspective for the world's events and the news that's unfolding every day. This is where I'm coming at this morning as I press in because there's an enemy that wants to take out your soul. He wants to ruin your your mind, will, and emotion. He wants to infect you there. And sometimes when he's infecting you there, then the reality of our world looks hopeless. It looks like the end is coming. But we know very clearly that there's message speakers that are addressing that and saying, no, this is not the end of the world. But if we've got an infection in our mind or our heart is weakened by, our faith is weakened, then we can see why we have a a doom and gloom perspective on the world right now. Let me take you to another scripture. Would you come there with me? Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5 is another context that I want to give you of a scripture where Joshua speaks very boldly and and, or God speaks very clearly and boldly to Joshua in the midst of, of an uncertain situation for him. You remember last Sunday, the message was that God was leading the Israelites. And as he was leading them, he led them through the the Red Sea. And then he led them into some desert territory, but the ultimate destination that God was taking his people was to the promised land. Well, let me come to Joshua 5 because this is context for when God was, through Joshua, leading the people 
out of the desert and into the promised land. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. Here's the verses. Here's the words. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us or for our enemies? Seems like a legit question in the moment, doesn't it? You see, Joshua was leading the people from uh, 40 years in the desert with no structures and buildings. He was leading them into the promised land to a land that was occupied by the enemy who had walls and fortresses. And that's what Joshua was seeing before him. He actually, the first city he was seeing was Jericho and the big mighty walls of Jericho. So Joshua's thinking, I need all the help I can get. He comes across this man who has a sword drawn. And he asks a legitimate question, are you for us or for our enemies? Because you want to know when you're going into battle, who's your enemy and who's, who's on your side with you. And so as he asked this question, what jo Joshua had in mind was he's looking for every person he can who could come in and, and, and kick down some walls with him is what he's looking for. So he asks, are you for us or for our enemies? Verse 14, neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And I want, I want to say, wait, what? <laughs> you know, Joshua asks the question, and the answer from this man is, are you for us or against us? And the answer is, neither. <laughs> but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And I think, wait a second, you're from God, but you're not saying you're for us? Like, what's the context here? Like, what is unfolding? And this verse always kind of troubled me a little bit, even when I would watch it with Veggie Tales with my kids years ago. And I'd see this unfold as, neither. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, you got to pick a side. Are you with us or against us? But I believe that the battle Joshua was about to engage in suddenly gained new perspective for him. Let me read the rest of verse 14. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? You see, there's something bigger happening in the context than we read in the black and white pages of our Bible of Scripture. What's unfolding here is that this messenger carries a presence of heaven with him. Why do I know that? Because what I'm seeing in Joshua is he falls face down. He kneels on the ground and bows before this, this commander from the Lord's army. What propels, what compels a person to do that? It's when they're in the holy presence of God. Joshua's response was no longer thinking about the wall of Jericho. It was no longer thinking about the fortress that was before him, the city, the battle that he thought he was into. Suddenly, in this moment, he is asking God, what are you saying and wanting from me right now? What is your message for me, your servant? Joshua's focus has, has gone right down onto God by faith. And he's asking God, what should I do right now? Samuel Chan is an author, motivational speaker. He speaks out and he says this in his book about leadership. He says, God often uses difficulties to clarify our purpose to purify our motives, and to give us a clear sense of direction. And that's true. God uses the moment to teach us things, clarify our purpose. In that moment, Joshua's purpose was clarified. In that moment, Joshua's motives were brought before him. And I, I, I imagine in seconds they came before, they flashed before his eyes, thinking, oh my goodness, what are my motives here in this battle to, to gain rewards and medals and for my name to be praised? <laughs> He was humbled in that moment. Also difficulties, God uses them to bring a clearer sense of direction for us. Notice the wording that Samuel Chan said here. God uses, often uses difficulties. He didn't say God causes them because we can see very clearly how God works. He works within it to draw us to him, to have faith in him so that he will lead us to victory. We know that here for Joshua, this was a holy moment. Let's go to verse 15. The commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. 
And Joshua did so. He was recognizing this is a holy moment here. The presence of God is with this commander. And I need to bow before him and just ask God, what does he want from me? Friends, the battle is going to be won in a different way than you and I think about. The battle we are fighting is different. The path to the victory is different than what we anticipate. And I encourage you to go on later today and keep reading in the next chapter of what Joshua experienced victory. And it looked different than he anticipated battles were going to look like. We need faith. We need faith that is focused in the right direction. This was true for Joshua. He came across the presence of God, a messenger from heaven, and he kneeled down and bowed and and engaged his faith to say, okay, obviously this is different than I anticipated. So God, I put my trust in you. What are you saying to me as your servant? How am I to walk this out? Church, we need faith. Faith that believes. Faith that can see. Faith that doesn't cower in this moment or get proud or self-boasting. But faith that says, oh, let me humble myself. And God, what are you saying in this moment? Because the battle is different than we envision. And church, when you engage in faith, you're going to get fresh vision for how victory will come in the, midst, in the midst of this battle. We know that we benefit from the presence of God being with us. It's not where we are. It's not who's with us. You see, Joshua was getting ready to take Jericho, but he was focused on the wall. He was trying to find bigger warriors than, than those in Jericho had. But what's important for us is how we focus our faith. Right now, we need a fresh focus of faith in the midst of this COVID-19 era. Right now, every day, we benefit from having fresh faith, fresh focus that comes out of that faith. How many of you listening right now wear glasses? Do you wear glasses? Do you need these glasses for focusing? (laughs) We need to be able to focus our faith in a fresh new way every day. I don't need these glasses to see you. In fact, if, well, if you were here in the room, I wouldn't need them to see you. I can see them fine, but I need these glasses to help me focus on what's right here in front of me. And I'm asking you this morning to invite God to give you a fresh focus so that fresh faith can rise up in you for these moments right now and give you the clear vision you need for walking out life today and now. Because what might appear to you as the bigger battles perhaps aren't the biggest battles in your life. But let me name some that might appear like big battles. Unemployment. Bills that need to be paid. Bills that are coming due this week or this month and you know there's not going to be income to take care of them. Maybe the big battle for you is if you have young children is going through another week with your kids going stir crazy in the house. Maybe it's for uh, some of your teenagers and they just want to get out. They just got to, they just got to go somewhere and connect with people and they just want to, just want to do something. Maybe that feels like your battle or, or going to the grocery store and each time you do the shelves are still empty. These may seem like the biggest battles right in front of you, but may I say as I highlight them that these battles can be taken care of all in a day's work by God. Truly, he can take care of them. Then you might ask, well, why doesn't he deal with it? Then why, why are these still issues in my life? I want to give you the word perspective this morning. Vision is all about perspective. The closer you get to God, the smaller your battles will appear. And I'm not the first one to say that, but you can quote me on it if you want to, because I believe it. The closer you get to God, the smaller your battles appear. That was true of Joshua, wasn't it? As he came into the presence of God, all of a sudden the battle looked, oh, Jericho, we can take Jericho, because God gave them fresh vision. The presence of God reveals that the walls we think we have, the battles that we think we have, he can take care of. He wants to posture our heart and our mind on him to overcome what's before us. Church, what the real battles that might be before you that God's wanting to address in your life could very much be sin. 
activity that you are doing that is direct disobedience to God, activities that you're involved in that break and hurt the heart of God, that they are not of his way of love and purity and holiness. Sin that rules in us may be the battle that God wants to engage in and destroy in your life. Or maybe it's denial is the battle that's in your life. Denial that you have sin. Denial that your lust is sinful. Denial that your lying or covering up things is wrong. Or maybe the battle is idolatry. Is you've put your trust in something else. Right now, uh, finances in the stock markets are all over and dropping and stocks are losing value and investments are plummeting. And all of a sudden you may realize, oh my goodness, that's my, that's my security. That's my retirement. Are you idolizing your portfolio of savings? Or let me talk about the battle maybe of adultery. Adultery, being unfaithful with another person. And it doesn't always have to involve another person because Israel was often accused of committing adultery with other foreign gods, being in love and affection with something other than the Lord God Almighty. But we know adultery could also involve a physical person or even a fantasy. What is the battles of sin in your life that God is wanting to call out in this time when we can't run away from them and God wants to address them and deal with them? Now, you may be listening and maybe you're even tempted to shut me off right now. Or you're saying, Pastor Bri, why are you being so heavy in this moment? Like, we've got enough heaviness. I'm just bringing a message this morning. And I'm trusting the Holy Spirit is bringing some clarity to you of where's the real battles and what does he want to overcome in your life? Because he wants to bring victory. He wants to deliver you from sin. He wants to bring forgiveness and allow you to express your repentance of sin and you to respond and say, God, bring victory in my life. I want peace to restore to my life. I think it's just because I'm unemployed or I don't have money, but God, I sense you're revealing some bigger, heavier things that you want to deal with, with in my life. The victory comes from God, but the perspective is based on your position. Are you going to stand and just say, no, I don't have any issues? Or are you going to recognize the presence of God is here and he's asking you to humble yourself and bow? Repent from your wicked ways. Second Chronicles 7, 14, the, the prayer that Rebecca read out. Turn from your wicked ways. Repent from them. Engage your faith in God and he will lead you. I've got, uh, I've got battles in my own life right now. Yeah, I've got battles about finances that are affecting our household. But I got battles as a leader in the church right now as well. How do we do church when we can't meet together? How do we encourage and teach people when we can't actually look eye to eye at each other? <laughs> FaceTime helps, but we can turn away from the screen, can't we? And we, we don't always look eye to eye. How do I lead a ministry right now when the budget was, has literally been cut in half? These are some of the battles that it looks like I have right in front of me. But I know enough from Joshua. I know enough from God's teaching to humble myself and pray and say, God, what are you doing to overcome these battles in my life? When fighting a battle, we need fresh, a fresh focus through faith. And I encourage you, church, today as I bring this message together is to gain a fresh focus, focus through faith is your battle sin that's, that's uh, occupying you, is it dominating in your life? I've got an answer for you. Is your battle fear in the midst of this time? I've got an answer for you. Is your battle doubts or disbelief? Again, I've got an answer. Is your battle finances or employment or mortgage payments? I've got an answer. I want to encourage you as a people to do what the people in Jesus' hometown just didn't get. I want to encourage you to have faith. Have faith because we're going to see a few sick people healed and then we're going to see with our faith God unleash and do miracles in this world. I want to encourage you to do what Joshua ended up doing was worshiping God, bowing down, humbling himself and saying, Lord, what message do you have for your servant today? 
So I ask, where are your eyes focused right now? Right now. Where are your eyes of faith focused? Joshua's focus was on a perceived solution. Let me get the biggest angels, the biggest army, and we'll conquer Jericho. But his eyes rather should have been focused on his God. And God, what is your plan for overcoming this battle? Can I tell you where I believe God wants you to focus this morning? And I'll finish giving you this scripture. And you can take it, study it, and unpack it. It's Colossians chapter 3. The Colossians 3 is going to reveal to us that the battle belongs to God. The battle belongs to the Lord, but our faith comes from us. Let me give you this, let me give you this scripture. Since you are in Christ or with Christ, Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Church, friends, this is what I encourage you. Colossians 3, get it out and underline these verses. Verses 2 and 3, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So focus there first. Even though coronavirus is spreading, even though we're quarantined again for another week and an indefinite period of time, set your mind, your focus, your thoughts. God, what are you saying to me as your servant right now? Christ is seated at the right hand of God. And scripture actually teaches we're seated next to him. We're there with him in a spiritual context of heaven and, and faith connection. So we're focusing our minds on, on Christ who's seated with the Father at his right hand. And we're, our minds are set on things above, not on earthly things. We're probably going to watch the news and listen to reports this afternoon, this week. But I challenge, I encourage you, don't let your thoughts be focused just on the immediate news and reports. Say, God, what do you, what do you speak into the midst of this? How can you contextualize this for me? Help me understand because the vi walls of this virus seem like they're taking us out as a whole world. You've got our attention, God. We fix our eyes on you, our mind on you, our hearts are fixed on you. Now, God, may you lead us in this moment. We set our hearts on you, our thoughts on you. This verse doesn't mean be oblivious to what's happening in our world and, and stuff that's happening around us. But what we're called to do is focus our faith on God. Ask God personally for you, God, what's my battle? What are you wanting to bring victory to me in my life? Lord, what do you say to me as your servant? Take the posture of Joshua and let's invite God's presence into our battles. Pastor JP and Nathan are coming next here and they're they're going to lead us in one more song. The song, you know it, we sang it earlier. It's called Tremble. And sometimes we want to tremble in fear. I want to encourage you to engage in faith as you sing the song and let the peace of God come over you and let him reveal the victory, the path to victory he has for you. Amen. Peace, bring it all to peace. The storm surrounding me, let it break. Your name cannot be overcome. 
vision for how to walk out the battles and the issues that are in our lives this week. God, we trust in you and seek you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We, we just want to finish our service off together. Obviously, we're husband and wife, so we can be close together. That's permitted. Um, but as, as we come and, and just finish off our service this morning, we want to highlight a few things. And one of them very clearly is that Jesus is where you're to put your faith and your focus. And we, we walk as followers of Jesus Christ, as believers in him. But if you've never said yes to putting your faith in Jesus, you can do that by a simple prayer. Is God, forgive me for the sin in my life. I want to invite your son, Jesus Christ, to come in and wash away my sin, to forgive me of my sin. And if you choose to do that in your own home, wherever you are, there's a button, there's a form, a tab right on the website there that you can click and say that you, you put faith in Jesus. And uh, let us know if you do. Let us know who you are because we want to be able to follow up with you, pray with you online and encourage you as well. And church, I just want to let you know, never have I been more reminded than when we came in the building this morning alone and it was dark and it was cold and it was empty. I've never been more reminded that the church is not a building. We are the church. Yes, we are. You are the church and you are full of hope. You are full of life and you are ready to spread the love of Jesus. And we just want to let you know how much we miss you yeah. and we love you. And I'm so thankful for that reminder this morning that the church does not live here. We are the church together. Yeah, amen. And it's true, Rebecca says, we love you, miss you. We want to connect online with you through our, our small groups, our connect groups, our discipleship groups, the divine women's groups. So go to our website if you're not connected already and get connected because as a church, we're meant to do life together and we're going to do it to the best of our ability while we're quarantined. Let me finish with sending you out with the same blessing that I did last Sunday. And I just speak it out again to you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Scared, does that ever happen to you? Maybe you start to lay there and you start to think and your mind starts going and you start to feel afraid inside. That happens to me. Are we live? Hey everybody, welcome back to Koinonia Kids Live at 10.30 on Sunday. Hope you guys enjoyed our service so far this morning. Okay, while people are tuning in, we're gonna do a little bit of Heidi Says, okay? It's like Simon Says, but because I'm Heidi, I'm gonna say Heidi, okay? So you gotta stand up on your feet. Everybody ready? All right. So, everyone's good? Heidi says, put your hands on your head. Heidi says, touch your shoulders. Heidi says, touch your knees. And pull your ears. <gasps> Did I get you? I didn't say Heidi says. Gotcha. Okay, here we go again. Ready? Heidi says, snap your fingers. Heidi says, stick out your tongue. Heidi says, touch your shoulders. Heidi says, give yourself a big hug and blink your eyes. Did I get you? I didn't say Heidi says or blinking your eyes. That's pretty good. Okay, I think you guys are good at this. Let's do it one more time while people are tuning in, okay? Heidi says, hmm, 
what should Heidi say? Heidi says, put your finger on your nose. Heidi says, do the chicken dance. <laughs> Heidi says, uh, use your phone like a, like a, or your, your foot like a phone. <laughs> That's hard for me to do. And touch your eyes. Oh, did I get you? I didn't say Heidi says. I bet you guys are really good at this game though, so I bet you I didn't get you. All right. Well, I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. I hope you guys are doing well. We've had a great week. And if you notice, it's starting to rain outside. Interesting. And you know what? That's actually perfect for my story today. You know what? I was thinking about something. You know what happens to me sometimes? Sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night, I've had a bad dream. It makes me a little bit scared. Does that ever happen to you? Maybe you start to lay there and you start to think and your mind starts going and you start to feel afraid inside. That happens to me too, where I start to get these like stormy thoughts going on and I start to feel afraid. You know, I don't know something. I have a story for you today that I think is going to help all of us. And this is another encounter with Jesus because Jesus is awesome, and all the encounters with Jesus are gonna help us. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my coat on for this one, because I'm gonna go outside. You guys, I'm gonna need your help for this story, okay? So here we go. So Jesus was out one day, and he was teaching people, just like he usually does. And this time, he finished teaching people, and he told his disciples, okay guys, we're going to go and we're going to get in the boat. And we're going to take the boat to the other side of the lake. Okay? All right. And that is when the wind started. Can you guys make a wind sound? Oh, whoa! Whoa, you're blowing me over with that wind noise. Oh, my goodness. Let me see if it's windy outside just like that. Whoa, I can see... Sounds a bit windy out here. Ooh, it's chilly. Keep your wind noises going, because as the wind started, whoa, then it started to rain. Can I get your pitter patter? Get your pitter patter, pitter patter. Let's see if we can hear the rain. Do you hear that? Whoa. It was starting to rain, and it was getting windy, and the rain started, keep your rain going. It started getting louder and faster. Pitter patter, pitter patter. Oh my goodness, and the wind was blowing. Keep it going. Oh my goodness, pitter patter. And then it started to thunder and lightning. Can anyone make sounds like thunder? <laughs> oh my goodness, that's crazy. Maybe someone can flick the lights on and off to make lightning. Oh, and the wind and the storm and the disciples were, oh, yep. They were getting all wet in the rain, and they were saying, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? And the waves were crashing. What are we gonna do? The rain and the wind and the waves, and then we don't know where Jesus went. Jesus, where is he? Hmm. And someone went downstairs and they found him. He was sleeping through the storm. Wow, can you guys make snoring sounds like you're sleeping? Someone said, hey, Jesus, wake up. Don't you see what's happening? It's raining outside, and it's a storm, and we need your help. And you want to know what Jesus said? Why are you afraid? And Jesus came up from underneath, and he said, peace, be still. And you want to know something? The storm stopped. So everyone, stop your storm sounds. sound of peace and calm and that's what Jesus did I'm not powerful enough to stop this weather but Jesus he is the one who has power over those storms <sighs> peace and calm come from Jesus he is so good and you know what sometimes when I wake up in the middle of the night it feels like a storm starting in my mind and I start to feel afraid. 
but I can remember, hey, Jesus is with me. And he has power over those storms. And he says, peace, be still. And I can trust him. I'm going to give you guys my very best tip for when you wake up with a bad dream. This is what I do. The best thing I can do is when those stormy thoughts start rolling in and I feel the thunder and lightning rolling into my mind, ah! I stop and I sing my favorite worship song. I have lots of favorites, but I pick one. You know one that I really love? It goes like this. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. And I start to sing. And you know what happens? I can feel the peace of God come into my mind. Isn't that cool? That's what Jesus does for us. Well, another thing I thought of, there is a verse that goes just with this, this idea. And you know what it says? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Isn't that cool? Actually, I think it's time for a memory verse challenge. Can you guys sing this song with me while I take my coat off? Ready? Memory verse, memory verse, memory verse challenge. Memory verse, memory verse, memory verse challenge. Oh yeah, it's a memory verse challenge. Whoop whoop. All right, let me see if our friend is is um, joining us today. I think Betsy's going to join us. Let me just check this out here really quick. Betsy, are you there? Hmm. Oh, let's see. Show you guys up my stairs here. I'm going to show you the memory verse for today. Here it is. Oh, we're going to do a challenge. <gasps> hey, Betsy. Hey. How are you today? I'm good. And I'm ready for the memory verse challenge. Awesome. You're really good at these challenges, and I think all the kids are too. All right, Betsy. So, can we say, how about you say the memory verse? Can you read it there? You say it for all the kids to join you, okay? One, two, three. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Thank you, Betsy. That's awesome. Okay, so what we're going to do now, everybody, is I am going to, you're going to say it out loud again with Betsy, and I'm going to stay right here. But then I'm going to back up, and the verse is going to get smaller, and you're going to have to see if you can remember it, okay? And you're going to say it again. Okay, so Betsy, go ahead. Everybody, let's say it together. Ready? One, two, three. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to back it up. Whoa, it's getting smaller. It's getting smaller. Do you guys think you can still do it from here? Oh, man. Okay, Betsy, go ahead. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Oh my goodness, way to go. Okay, I'm going to back up again. Are you guys up for this challenge? Here we go. Backing up, backing up. Oh, it's getting so small. Oh my goodness, I'll focus it for you here, hopefully. Oh, that's the best you're going to get here. Can you remember it? Okay, Betsy, go ahead. One, two, three. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Oh, wow. Do you guys think you can do this one more time? It's getting pretty fuzzy. I don't know. I'm going to back you up one more time. Here we go. Down the stairs. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, my. It's so tiny now. I can't even read it from here. But I bet you guys are so smart, you can probably say it one more time. Okay, Betsy, go ahead. One, two, three. Second Timothy 1, verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Wow! Good job, everybody. 
That was amazing. You guys are so great at this. And you know what? I just want to remind you that God has not given you a spirit of fear. That's not for you. Instead, what you can have is power. You can have his love. And he's going to help to give you a sound mind. So if you wake up in the night or something's scaring you, maybe like this thunderstorm we have today, you just remember that Jesus says this, peace, be still. We can have a sound mind and calm, peaceful thoughts. And we don't need to be afraid because he's going to take care of us. All right. I love you guys so much. And I can't wait to see you again next week. All right. And thank you, Betsy. Thanks.